with three rounds into the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup and still half a dozen drivers are close in the championship in the pro division. At the moment, Salvatore Line, despite not winning a race this season, has a small advantage. As we head to VIR for round four of the championship, we wait to see who can take the latest momentum in what has so far been a very topsy-turvy season. Welcome to Apex Racing TV. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick. I have once again alongside me David Sampson and David we head to VAR, a circuit not uh, the most commonly used in iRacing and I think one of the most Marmite circuits as well but one that ever since the rescan in particular has really grown on uh, my, my my affections. It is Marmite and just like Marmite I love it. Uh, I get why some don't. Uh, it's not the most popular track. It is not. It's very technical. It's very fast. Uh, mistakes are not are rewarded with well it's a little bit different now with the easier grass but still mistakes are punished here at this track um, I've always liked this track and uh, while I appreciate the rescan I think it's great I do miss the tree we all do I was looking at the track map earlier on and it's still called still called oak tree but uh, unfortunately there's no tree to crash into anymore uh, but uh, yeah it will be uh, good fun to see these jars tackle this circuit not for the first time we do visit this place quite often in the Porsche Cups the Porsche Cup community like this place uh, and so it is nice to welcome it back once again. Let's have a look at the Porsche Cup car of course over 500 horsepower uh, just over one and a quarter tons and uh, we'll be getting fairly close at 282 kilometers an hour by the end of the back straight round this uh, fairly high speed circuit we have here and of course we can also look at the calendar and of course last time out David we went to Road Atlanta for our first hour long race and I think it was for me the best round of the championship and uh, it produced some really good racing and a bit of a mixed up grid. Yeah, oh, I did enjoy the Brands Hatch heat racing format because it was my first time uh, sure. going through that format. But yeah, I, I mean, I could race for hours at Rodeland, so I could watch it for hours. I think this is going to be a different base, um, very difficult. Obviously, stand in start today. Uh, fun fact, in a rolling start condition at this track, you start inside pit road. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why, but you start. Well, I was going to say, is it because of the fact that it's an old track, but it's not. No, you it's just... It's a rescan. And you always see the same thing every year. People ha have their pit limiter on just in case. Sure. You, yeah. you, because you just feel like you're here and you shouldn't speed, yeah. but you can. Sure, yeah. I, well, leave, my, I leave my pit limiter on. <laughs> well, if I've set up the session correct, it will be a stunning start, but who knows? Um, it could be, could be a rolling start. Um, a quick reminder, actually, as well, uh, of uh, a new championship that we have coming up already had a lot of signups for this apexracingleague.com is where you can register for ARL sports cars I think we've had so far about 42 entries something like that and we are getting pretty low on slots now particularly in the GT4 category we will cut off the GT4 because so far it's the more popular one uh, I think so far we've had about double the amount of GT4 CCRs so we will cap the GT4s eventually so if you want to get in the GT4s you've got to sign up in the next few days otherwise you'll miss out if you're in the TCRs you should have until the first round of the championship which is in 10 days time in order to sign up that's on Monday night uh, 1900 GMT is when the race starts and um, should be really good seven races are you going to sign up because Lewis has put his name down. I'm, I'm yet to see your It's name. going down, yes. Well, on a, well you on need a... to sign up yes. soon. <laughs> I will. Or are you not listening to me just now? Yes, I'll, I'll get that slot in tonight. Good. Yes, sir. Okay. Maybe we'll do it midway through the Apex uh, <laughs> later on and make sure that he's on the grid. Um, let's have a look at the uh, standings then. And I mean, I was looking at these standings before. It is it is close. Mm -hmm. Like Lane, I don't believe has won a race this season. But there he is at the top. He's just been consistent. He's done all the rounds. And everyone else who has done well has, has missed rounds. You, you saw it last week. Corey Lazarus was comfortably the championship leader, but missed the round. And he's now outside the top five. Yeah, no, it's very tight. It's going to be very interesting. We've had a lot of... We haven't had a runaway from any drivers. We've had some really good performances, but um, the races have been really tricky. And we've had some mixed formats. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic again with the heat format to really uh, bring out the best of them. Mm. Uh, let's have a look at the AM class as well. Still fairly close. Christensen up at the top. Pedersen could have really got a nice gap last time out, but of course he had that late incident around the final corner. Got a 4x, would have won the AM race comfortably, but instead got a 40 second post race penalty and it sent him down the order. If it weren't for that, he'd be on over 300 points now, I think. 
Uh, instead, he is stuck in that second place, but I think has established himself as the fastest driver so far this season. Nick Kirstens, he was really quick last time out, but he uh, spun off in the early stages after a collision, which actually the driver who uh, caused the incident did get a penalty. So watch out for Kirstens as well. And we can look at the team's championship as well at the moment. Um, and uh, again, in this one, I think uh, still Sim Race Sweden, uh, a fair amount behind, and I think North Sim Racing with quite a comfortable advantage. So uh, North Sim Racing leading that one. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's looking looking pretty close in uh, both the Pro and the Am at the moment. Yeah, um, I mean, North for looking, is it North? They're North Sim Racing. Looking yeah. very strong. Obviously got a lot of drivers and they're all very competitive drivers. Um, but yeah. I think it's going to be tight in the AM class, but I can see them dominate the pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, uh, yeah, they're looking... Still a long good. way to go, though. Yeah, it's a long season, this, isn't it? Yeah. 12 rounds. We're going to be racing these events until the late parts of May, so still got a long way to go. Welcome to everyone in chat, by the way. Uh, Nick Horn complaining about the FPS losses on this circuit. Um, and also Liam Slipdiffs, welcome. How are your well. trees? Lower your trees, get rid of the two pass tree two trees, and okay, lower yeah. the speed tree setting. Because this, this this track is just trees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that trees. Um, let's have a look at the uh, track then that we have in store for us today. And uh, unfortunately on this we can't see so many of the trees, but you, 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 it is pretty much just littered uh, with, the, with the stuff, with the foliage. And uh, turn one, lap one, always a bit of a menace. Not quite as bad now I think with the new grass. Now that's a bit more grippy, but it used to be, particularly on the old scan, you go a little bit wide and you're off the circuit for a couple of minutes. Yeah, not just that. I bet none of them have practiced the breaking point from a standing start. They're used to absolutely chucking it down the straight. This is a long straight with very high speed. From the standing start, they're able to break a lot deeper. But do they know how deep? Yes, <laughs> that is uh, what they need to uh, consider on that one. And then do you turn two and three, which always feels a little bit like different to the rest of the track and then into four and five very slow speed corners six and seven aren't really corners well there you can see five a six uh, awful corner naming on this track and then you go into the s's section that's i think the part of the track that everyone enjoys and often a place where you see a lot of crashes drivers try to go through there too wide but it very rarely works yeah i just straight line it so you don't want to share it with me because i don't share i just show sure. yeah get it straight bang over the curbs i love it i love that complex but it's the left hand of the, the turn 10 yeah, oh, I was now. love that corner because it's just full trust and commitment because you just lob the car in not knowing not really knowing how far you're going to track it and just trusting it yeah well now you can clip the grass a little bit which is nice because before you'd end up in the oak tree sure yeah uh which unfortunately is no longer there we go through t11 and t12 really tricky couple of it corners is. that because you have to push it through 11 in order to have a lot of entry speed for 12 but uh, again, just pushing a bit too hard, and that is a place where you can hit the wall. And lock up, yeah, it's, it is tricky double uh, double right hander. 14 and 15, 14 and 14 a as well, tricky. Very easy to lock up a break, but the banking does help you slightly to get round there. 15, not much a corner, and then 16 and 17, very fun section. Big drop on the circuit, and then you power out and onto the front straight. Um, I'm not a fan of the last corner. I've always it's, just found it's, it's a pain, isn't it? It's just awkward. The rest yeah. have got well, even the two corners in front of it are really yeah. good, and then yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. that final corner because you want to go flat out, yeah. but you just have to give up a little bit in order not to touch the grass. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, it's but in the end, it's a pretty good circuit. We're very pleased to be here, and we will have the two heats, the B final and the A final coming up for our 26 drivers tonight. But we will go to a quick advert and then we will be trackside for qualifying for the amateurs going out on track. So we'll be back with you in just a moment on Apex Racing TV.
Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Welcome to VIR, and uh, yeah, we are now in the early stages of qualifying. The Amgia is just going out for their outlaps before uh, having 10 minutes of the track to themselves in order to try to put in the best time possible. Um, thanks to the sponsors that you just saw before, by the way, VRS, and of course you can get your VRS equipment, whether that be your pedals, your wheelbase, or your wheel rim, over at apexracingsim.com. You can also get other stuff from apexracingsim.com. Uh, Husenfeld engineering products and cube control products as well you can get from apexracingsim.com. So really, if you're looking for any upgrade for your sim racing setup, uh, that is the place to go. Once again, apexracingsim.com. Do visit for many different products for you to, uh, to purchase. Um, here they are, out on track, and uh, one of the most tricky qualifiers to think of the season. One, you don't get many laps, and two, it's... Uh, just a tricky circuit to maximise. It is. It, re it really is. Um, I've, it, this is a track I do love racing. Um, but again, at my I rating level, it is tricky to find an event where you don't have to finish first to just get four I rating, unfortunately. Um, yeah, always enjoyed this track. It's so technical. And oh dear, we seem to have had a. And I don't use the word lightly, a criminal on track. A criminal. Uh, a pro driver out on circuit. And, uh, well, that's going to mess up that nice uh, that nice white leaderboard. Because my Borg has made a mistake. Uh, but, uh, you know, you live in there. What, what if he just does an outlap, comes in and realises his mistake? Uh, he'll get three licence points, which is halfway to a qualifying ban. Okay. But he's has set a lap time, so... Uh, oh, he has. Oh, dear. Yeah, straight to jail then. Yeah. Shame. I'm sure he's a nice guy. <laughs> the, the problem is, obviously, I've been there in leagues because you're so used to doing things as the way they are that when it says qualifying, you're like, okay, let's go. You you remember reading the rules, but the button's there. No one. <laughs> like, I, I remember. I, 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 did you read the rules? You know I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't. I didn't know about start. I was in my first race, ARL race, and it, it, thank God chat was there for me to tell me about starting zones. I'm like, what's a starting zone? No, no, the champ no, there was no starting zone. Uh, was it was a starting zone, what was it then? Something they told me about. Right at the beginning of the race, and I didn't know about. Um, but the, the other pros have, have, have nailed it, so well done to all of them. Uh, Kirsten's currently on pole position, but you can see, I think a lot of the times are uh, drives you like came out of the pits. I think it counts your outlap, so it's not representative at all. But Kirsten set the fastest outlap of anyone, if that counts for anything. Luritsen though goes faster. Nick Horn on pole position. Stop the counts, everyone. This is the result that we uh, all want, really. So the pro could have just done an outlap. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think he's now going to set a lap as Meinberg. Christensen goes to P1 ahead of Pedersen, but still we're waiting for the likes of Kirsten's to burn a time. Swan goes top. Mein Borg, the pro driver, does go top as well. And who else is on a lap? There is Kirsten's. I wonder if he invalidated his first lap because I'm not seeing any improvement from him. He's still got another five minutes, but it does put a bit of extra pressure on, on him now. Yeah, it does. It's a long lap here. Uh, long out lap. You're trying to look after your tyres as well. 
This is the corner we were talking about, turn 10. I don't know, I haven't driven here on a pickup in a while. And does look like you want to carry, you definitely want to carry a lot more than you think into that first of the right hand. Yes. Yeah. Because you break, 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 and then you sort of, if you're throttling again, you've done it wrong. You I, yeah. You, oh, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. You but, can take that pit road, right? With no penalty, yeah, yeah, yeah. no one X. Oh, trust me, I've done it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've seen um, the, it may be Max Bantz, the Jimmy Broadbent um, stuff. And I think Jake Sperry as well is the other one who organised it. At Road Atlanta, they used the old pit lane at Road Atlanta oh, as a joker yeah. lap. And it was really good. Like, <laughs> you know, Rally Cross is good, but that was like an awesome joker lap. For them yeah. to use. And that that would be a decent one for VAR. Uh, hello to Greg in chat. Hello, Glenn. Hello, Liam. Hey, everyone. I think... Where's Cursor? Oh, I haven't actually looked at his uh, sector times. Where's he going to go? He... Second, which is basically first of the amps. So that's a good effort there from Kirsten's. Up ahead of Luke Swan. And that is very much delivering on the on the promise that Kirsten's had, not just in the practice session tonight, but also his qualifying last time at Road Atlanta. He was rapid, but unfortunately he collided in the early stages with another driver and that forced him to the back of the field. I think I should have race control privileges and I could DM the drivers while they're on the outlet. Say park it, mate. Park it or points. I'd happily do that for you. Yeah. Oh, well, there's you, Robert. You could load into the sim on your laptop. Should I fire it up? Or do a lap with the mouse and keyboard? Yeah. Easy. So I, I was helping Robert about 10 minutes before this uh, today. I came in here to set up his... He didn't know about an OBS virtual camera because he went to show his camera and was like, it won't let me. I was like, do you know about virtual cameras? He said, no. I was like, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to type quick. <laughs> he, he set it up nicely. Some very nice lighting. He has, yeah. Robert. See what he where is he at the moment? P six, seven tenths off. Well, four tenths off. Kirsten's. And that's the target, right? Yeah. Old school Samsung blue livery, very old school. Very, very old school. Years old that livery. Oh, and uh, our producer Lee Thompson has been able to uh, remove the the rogue pro driver. I want to know if he's removed him by filtering the standings or just <laughs> DQ'd him from the event. <laughs> I don't think he has permissions to do that. <laughs> no, actually, no, he does. He does. He could have just gone by him. We are not sure. But I think the lap time might remain, even when you DQ someone. But they just won't yeah. be able to race. Yeah, that's true. Um, Looking for a better lap than Worm. He's been good this season. Don't expect him to be two seconds off the pace. My pick for the Amateur Championship. Christensen moves up to the top. Pedersen improves to P5 of the uh, Robert Erasmus, apologies, variety. Uh, Verm remains at the bottom. Swan moves up to second place now. So Kirsten's, despite having a gap on these guys in practice, he needs to improve a lot in order to take this pole position. Bernand across the line. He improves significantly, but it's only enough for one place ahead of Veselek. So looking at Robert's lap, all his sectors looking good. Slower by yeah. seven seconds. I think that was an outlap. Right. It's confusing around VAR. The, the pit lane is before the start finish line. And right, therefore course, the, yeah. uh, the time <coughs> starts before, I think Okayama is the other big one that comes to mind. Uh, Vezelek moves up to P2. Big improvement from him. That was a, he went a second faster on that second lap. It really just does show, once you've got that banker in, it, it frees you up and you can push the car a lot more, but Van Horn's pushing that one uh, way too far. That will be the end of his qualifying session with that 1X. Yeah, it's a frustrating corner. Uh, you know, Like I said, this is quite a technical track, especially that section of the track. I'm going to try and keep it in a high gear and let it track out towards the grass so that when you pull the car back, you've got a nice uh, open corner for you to throttle. Disappointing qualifying for Ben Pedersen, one of the fastest drivers of anyone back at Grand Hatch. But wasn't particularly on it, honestly, back at Road Atlanta last time out. And he's uh, lacking eight tenths as well tonight. So not good news there for Ben Pearson. He he was very good in the race, though, I should say, last time out. It was just qualifying that he struggled in. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, that is behind. Uh, and he's not the top Pedersen with Rasmus ahead of him. And there's also another pro. 
uh, Pedersen. I wonder if you can enter the pit like that, crossing the line in the race. It's, it's, it's a 50-50 of our racing. Sometimes they're super strict, where if one tyre crosses the line, pit entry penalty. Some you can, like Watkins Glared, or there's quite a few where you can just completely abuse it. As long as you're slowed down in time, entry doesn't matter. But no, back to your point about who's fast, who's slow. This track, for some, might be their first time ever, to be honest. Might have learnt it a couple of days ago, and this is their first race they're competing in. You find sure. that, you're going to find that a lot, I reckon. This isn't a free circuit, is it? It is now. It is I now, think. okay. Yes. I remember it was so confusing back when I always released it because it was like, is it a free circuit? They were like saying, oh, well, you get the update for free, but it's like, yeah, but is that if we already had the old scan or what? But is that someone sat behind Philip Hammer in the corner? Oh, we, we often see this from Philip, but maybe this, this is the first time this season he's enabled his webcam, but he always has someone sat behind him. Ah. Oh. And they're in the darkness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Not anymore. There you go. We got a close up. Hey. hey. <laughs> She's obviously listening to the broadcast on her phone. Yeah, join 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 the chat. Uh let us know um anything you want about Philip. Because uh he can't respond because he's driving. But we can't see that standing he's the one with the photo. Oh, he's, he's I mean, probably the best photo <laughs> I think I've ever seen. And I don't say that lightly. Uh, we've got feed like camera. Everyone's using cameras today. Where I don't understand where the camera is. I've always, some, I, I can't do this. I've never been able to do this. This is when you were watching Jimmy Broadbent back in the day, this is how you had your camera. But for me to pull this off, I have to stick my, monitor, uh, my camera to my monitor and put it in the middle of my screen. Sure. <laughs> it's, I, I assume these people have their monitors far from their screens and low down. I can't think of any, any other way of doing it. Uh, Greg Hubler confirming in chat, yes, it is now free with the new scan. Thank you, Greg, for confirming that one. What a great circuit for them to add free. Um, it is not used that much anymore. Like, it's used in IMSA, to be fair. It's track, but yeah, it's not used for that much other stuff. So, yeah, good good of iRacing to make it free. Yeah, Robert in chat asking, uh, yeah, why did uh, May Mayenborg qualify? We don't know. He obviously just uh, preemptively you're, pressed the button. You're here, why at court? Court, yes. <laughs> Oh, uh. So a quick story on this exact moment, but when we was uh, doing Daytona 24 with uh, like Yuri Castro, loads of heavy eSport guys and me and TK, yeah, the lesser eSport guys, was in the practice session, it's one of those delayed ones where it's like half an hour, 40 minutes, we get into qualifying, the button comes up and TK clicks it out of habit. Yeah, you know, when that green button comes up, you click it. Yeah. He realised what he did, got out of the car and was like, sorry mate, let's go. And... Yeah, no one else could qualify. He had to qualify in split. Like, we were in a very high split, but because he had hit the button... I didn't know it worked like that. Yeah. Only one person can qualify? Yep. Okay. I, I've, I've never... Made, it's never come up I've before. never made that mistake before, but I did not realise that was a thing, honestly. Yeah, he was... Yeah, panicking. He'd, he'd never done a lap of queue. Well, obviously, in his life, he has, but for the event. Sure. And the set we had was you know, e-sporty, with low wing and dangerous. A mistake he never, ever repeated. Well done to him. <laughs> he has a habit of not even going near the mouse when that button kicks in, just to be sure. Hello, Alan in chat. Alan with uh, his normal, rather rude <laughs> comments. <laughs> I don't even see him anymore. Eh? <laughs> no. It, it, to me, he just said hi. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lazarus goes to the top. Well, not the top. He's still behind Mayenborg. He is still out on track, so breaking the rule, but making the most of it. Chalet moves up to the front row now. So Mayenborg's out very strong, and Christensen, Christensen's lap as well pretty strong. But we did see the arm drives improve a lot as the session goes on, just as you gain confidence. So maybe we'll see some appearance there. What I will say is that the track conditions should pretty much stay the same. We use static weather for these sessions. We copy the Apex Racing Academy data pack settings and so the track temperature the air temperature and all that stuff should be pretty much the same it's just the track will get a bit more rubbered in as the session goes on that really should be the only change but about a long track like BIR shouldn't make a big difference it's it, like Pedersen very quick in qualifying dare I say maybe the favorite for Paul tonight Manbox penalty does need increasing now though going out at the wrong time that's a penalty doubling the length of your quality 
It's another penalty. Well, see what you're saying, like three years and three years. Jails? Yeah. person a little bit hesitant but he still got good speed on the engines you see i like corners like that because personally i hate corners where i go through it and i think that was good and then i lost a tenth whereas that corner you know if you've lost time and so you know how to appeal that's that's personally my biggest frustration in sim racing is when you don't know how to get faster i love this corner coming up but obviously with the changing camber nature uphill it's easy to lock but it's so advantageous to carry speed through that corner and get out. I love this curb complex. I'm just not a big fan of the last corner. This final bit here. Yeah. Yeah, not a fan. Pedersen to the line. This is going to be pretty quick. I think front row of the grid for Pedersen. And it is, but it's not good enough for Paul. For now, it is good enough for Paul for Philip Hammer, though. Our race winner last time out. And he goes three tenths clear. That is some gauntlet to set. Yeah, and he hasn't had half an hour to try it like Manborg. Sorry, last dig. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jameri, uh, who was absent last time out. Very strong driver, though. Uh, he moves up into second place now. Great to see Lazarus Hammer and Jameri and Nikolai Pedersen as well. Four drivers who have been very strong this season, but haven't actually raced against each other so far. Uh, all racing tonight. So this is definitely the highest quality field we've had. As speed of that can he goes up to 15th, but still nearly a second off pole. I'm surprised how close it is, honestly, David. I thought around here, and I say that a lot, but I thought around here it would be big gaps, but it's not. No, I agree. Well, it's... I'd say seven tenths in the top 11 is the highest in, I'd say, we've had, if memory serves. Last two rounds right, have been yeah. super close. But then again, yeah, like you say, it's still not separated by a lot. We are seeing the definite confirmation of it being a tactical track with the top eight all being pros without exception. Obviously, Christensen, who he knows quick, he's actually got pro pace. Just happens to be 2.9K. So where are we next week? It's, um, 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 I do know. Zolder. Well done. Oh, oh, no, sorry. it came up oh, on the screen, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was looking at my, my uh, producer making me look smart. Yeah. I wouldn't have remembered, actually. I love Zolder. Again, not a track most people can have been, but then heavy hitters are up next with, you know, Road America, Sebring, Bathurst, Spa, Nürburgring. Magello. Wow, you're really good at remembering these tracks. Thank you. And then Zanfort to close us out on week 12. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, even I didn't know that. No. <laughs> Lazarus improves to P3. <laughs> Hamas, Jameri, Lazarus. The top three as it stands. Pilak still out there improving. We've got Dimbolo improving. I mean, look, look, all the pro drivers are out on track. And of course, they have got the 22 minutes. Um, to set times, but they have to complete the lap time before then. And um, Andy in chat asking whether it's a uh, fixed setup or open. It is open setup, and you can put as much fuel into the car as you want. Oh, it's open. I assumed this series, yes, was open. Right, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's all that preparation I did. Yeah, yeah. Along with learning the tracks and the order. Well, you, you know what, we with the Apex Racing Academy series, we used to make them fix setup, uh, but people would complain about the setup, saying that it doesn't quite fit my driving style, which is fair enough. Um, so, yeah, we made it fixed. So the drivers, when they sign up for this, uh, so, sorry, we made it open. Mm -hmm. So when the drivers sign up for this, they do get a one month free Apex Racing Academy subscription. So they can use the sets, but they don't have to. I, right. I certainly know what I'd be doing. 100%. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah. Nailed it. Andy asking in chat as well. Race is one hour, right? No. It uh, is. Two heats, a B final and an E final. Two 10 minute races. And a 14. And the top six from each go through to the A final. And yeah. then everyone else in the 14 minute in the B final competes for the opportunity of the top three going through to the A final. Yeah. And that was from ahead, well, from learning earlier. So I wanted to learn the heat. Well, from and, and from experience, it was the same at Brown Touch. Correct. Ooh, Chalet moves up to P2, but still Hammer with a gap. Oh, Chalet taught me how to say his name. Uh, he came into my oh, chat. Oh, is it Chalet? Ch I don't 
don't remember. I think it's a cha. It's no, it's shay. Shay lay. Oh, shay. Shay a. Shay. Shay a. I can't remember. He taught Shay. me, but I don't remember. But yeah, I spoke to Dimbolo and Shay. 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 Le, Shay le, oh man, I can't remember. Uh, it's Shay. Yeah. It's Shay. Yeah. <laughs> Shay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I remembered. Sure. Well done. Bam. Um, uh, Gabriel Salomon in chat, our pro champion from last season, and a driver who will definitely be in Pesca next season because he is very, very good. Welcome, Gabriel. And a uh, shame that you couldn't take part this season, but it's got some real life racing, which unfortunately got in the way. Yeah, when he started talking to me, I was like, mate, please confirm how we say your name, because I know we're probably not saying it correctly, but we're confident we are. So is it Che? He he broke it into phonetics for me, and it was Shay Yeah. Oh, Shay Yeah. Shay Yeah. Sure. Probably then put them back together, but I just left them apart, so. Sure. <laughs> Shay, cool. Thanks, Phil. Anyone else improving? This is a good lap from Hammer. Personal best sector one, uh, sector two, sector three, sector four, and sector five. I mean, this this could be another two tenths shaved off. This this might put it well out of range for the opposition. Bit of a drift to the final corner, but it didn't look like it lost him any time. Real nice there from Phil Hammer, and this is going to extend the lead. Out at the top of qualifying. Oh, no, he didn't improve. No, I'm just checking the sectors now. He set five personal best sectors out of six. Oh, but was it? But he ha his first sector was awful. I'm not sure what's going on there. But, I mean, his, his optimal must have been an immense hammer. But no, he was short. Pedersen, meanwhile, across the line, he moves up to P5, so not quite delivering on the promise of his qualify of his practice. He was the fastest man in practice, but does move up to P5. Lane will not get his final lap in, but that really did close in near the end. Top eight, separated by three and a half tenths of a second. So we're going to be showing the standings for the first race. What are they called? Heat race one? Is that what we're calling the first one? Heat one. Heat one. And it is Hammer ahead of Stromeri on the grid. Then it is Nikolai Pedersen, Sasha Mayenborg, James Parker, Adam Veselek. And those top six would be the six who would go through to the A final if they finish how they start. Then it's Distraz, Walker, Rasmus Pedersen, Van Horn, Bernand, and Dunton, and Horn, and Forsland. And Kevin Richard. Richard with a qualifying ban, if I recall correctly. Oh, shame. I'm a Kevin fan. Uh, did he get a penalty? Yes, he did. Uh, Stefano Senna and Kevin Richard with the qualifying bans for tonight. Um, Hammer looked pretty imperious last time out, didn't he? Once he took the lead in the early stages. Uh, same, same story tonight. Well, if I remember rightly, P we've got a bit of a P2 curse standing starts in these races. It's all but, I think, every but one where P3 has got the jump on P2 easily. Yeah, you're right, because I was thinking that Hammer starts P2 last time out, but no, he didn't. P3. He, he, he starts on P1, but oh, it, was, uh, yep. it went down to the fourth decimal yes. of, uh, of times. So, no, you are right. Yeah, and then, of course, yeah, the guy who was alongside him dropped down. Nikolai Pedersen dropped down. So, no, you're, you're very right. Uh, Chris Harnell, thank you for the sub. Apex Racing. TV YouTube channel. That takes a while to undo, by the way. <laughs> Just waiting for everyone to grid. Oh, have you heard the new spot calls while waiting? It's the iRacing crew chief will now tell you five left to grid, three left to grid, and I then like it say that. things like, we're just waiting for the last guy to grid, or person, racer. Well, he's not saying that anymore. Everyone is on the grid, and heat one of the evening is underway. And well, it's again, again a poor start for P2, but it's not a great start for P1 either. Alexander Chalet, absolutely launching it and he is sat behind philip hammer who keeps the lead into turn one but losing a lot of places and going to lose more places as well it's an awful start for mateus Jomeri, who i think may have even been involved in a spin the car spinning round it is a pinch point on the exit of turn one and Mindborg and walker were two of the drivers who were involved so it's hammer leading the way great start for pedersen to move up into p2 Distraz in third, then it's Parker Strameri and Van Horn. They are the top six. Great start for Van Horn. 
and uh, Rasmus Pedersen as well. Decent start by him. He's trying to get into those advancing places. I think we're going to see P2 in the replay get at... Oh, I think we just saw a spin-off back there. I think oh, that was Richard again. I think P2 got absolutely sent on. I think it wasn't just... Ooh, no. Ouch. That was Veselak who made the contact with Richard. Yeah, I, I don't know if Kevin... I don't think Kevin was actively rejoined. He was stuck in the middle. Yeah, I think the replay's going to show P2 getting absolutely sent. He was he was up for P4 into T1. And <laughs> I think he couldn't make the apex, and I think he got lobbed by two more. He was forced off, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. Three wide just doesn't work. The guy on the inside can never hold. This is close. Hammer. He can choose which way he defends. No way. Where Pedersen is aggressive enough on the brakes, he might not be able to defend. Here they go, alongside at the end of the back straight. Hammer leaves room, and Nikolai Pedersen might just pull this one off. They're still alongside through three corners now, and he wow. nips ahead. What a start for Nikolai Pedersen, the man who started in P3, and by the end of lap one, he is leading the way. And here at VAR, that could be very decisive, not just for this heat, but potentially for the A final as well. Wow, what a move. Not an easy move to do in these cars, um, especially on lap one. You know, still trying to build confidence in the tyre and getting it up to temp. Uh, but that was a great race car from them both. Pedersen moves up into P6 and top of the Ams. That's the, of the Rasmus variety. But Van Horn is getting the cut back. Van Horn up four places from his race start. He did get past Pedersen on lap one, and he's got past again. He keeps up P6. Yeah, nicely done. He's got to defend the inside here, though. But it's easy to defend his hang it out wide, you get the right hander, and then you can just not get the off track here this time, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Joel going to quite slowly there. Yeah, I think I mean it's a shame what happened to P2, but the poor start that we unfortunately are cursed with watching every race in this league. <laughs> it left the door open and he couldn't close the door because P2 and P4 had it. Which he would have been sorry. P3 and P4 had it, um, and yeah, then pe everyone behind just saw an opportunity and dived him. I think I don't think they hit him on the way in. I think they just ran out of room mid corner. I think he got forced onto the grass. Hammer's going to have a chance at coming back here. He's as close as what Hammer as what Pedersen was to him on the previous lap, and he will get his nose ahead. This is not easy done though. But it's who is going to be more confident. It is Hammer, and we have another change for the lead. Philip Hammer now at the head of the field and it's Pedersen who's going to have to dip into the draft and whilst he was able to get past on that point he might not be able to do it again meanwhile Rasmus Pedersen has got past Van Horn but that is why he's got past Van Horn and I'm sure we'll find out soon whether that was contact between the two of them or an unforced error yeah well said what a battle for the lead it seems the draft here is working better than last week I mean last week we were a little bit surprised that we didn't get much Draft kicking mm. here, not been the case. If you uh, have fresh air in front of you, you better be checking your mirrors, it seems. As a sort of a weird overtaking spot as well there, because like either way is quite even, like the inside and the outside. Correct. It's just about having the overlap. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah about the momentum yeah. and like, yeah, who, who's willing to send it more. I would, if it was me, I would give them the right-hand side. Sure because my theory is I'm going to go deep and try and hold to the left, but it's a tricky, it really is a tricky line because you can't just eat across the grass on the inside if they squeeze you a little bit. Hey, Thomas and chat. Hey, Phil. Okay, so Robert's getting fired back up. He can't do very well tonight, isn't he? He um, said that he'd done no practice for this race. And so I was anticipating a bad result, but P8 in the heat would be good. But every driver says that. I say that on stream. I'm lying. That We all lie. I mean, look. We all say that, right? Cameras can't hear me, right? <laughs> That's what we all well, say. We were having this, this moan last week. But, I mean, now that I've said Horn was doing well, he's, he is just uh, deployed the reverse gear because he's being overtaken left, right and centre. I mean, why would one. you volunteer the information? Oh, no, you... he's not going to make that, no. is he? No. Oh, he has? Wow. wow. It's a nice livery on um, Nick Horn's car, the TH. Is it the THR? THR, yep. Yeah, you're never going to volunteer the information that you've practiced really hard and you've put thousands of hours in, because then if you're quality eighth, it's, it's not good luck, is it? Whereas if you say, oh, I didn't practice at all, and 
finish V7, you look like a god. <laughs> so you always go with the, the latter. But Nat's just made a mistake, and now he's pulling some extra shapes oh. on the straights. It's not straight, that's the why they're door banged. It oh, is a straight. Oh, he's made that. He yeah. has made that, my poor. Well done. I had got in a big instant here because the straight isn't as straight as it looks. So I thought it was his fault, he thought it was mine, and when we watched the replay, we have yeah, both. We both, you know, our interpretation of what's straight on the straight and what's right and left. Oh, can he hold this? This is going to get tricky. Very tricky. No, he's. Oh, and it's a double overtake. What a move from Bernand. I tell you, I think they all knew Mayenberg extended his qualifying. He is down seven. <laughs> I mean, karma, right? <laughs> yeah, karma sandwich. No, at the start of the race, he, he dropped 10 positions, I saw. All right, replay's coming in hot. Let's see what happened in P1. So P2 had a very bad start and look, absolutely lobbed. Yeah, absolutely lobbed. Oh, oh and there's the second day contact. Why did he just spin? Chalet. I don't know, I couldn't tell if he free spun that himself. Let's see. Brian Walker and mine Walker, the ones who got turned. I'm not sure, I don't feel so bad for P2 there. I don't know. Right, let's see Kevin Richard, what happened to him? What? Oh, oh. He was offline, offline, then yeah, came back from the grass and had to put steering in. This was our first lead change, Hammerson, Hammer and Pedersen. This was great. Phillips one of the cleanest drivers we, get, we have in the series, and he's demonstrated that there, always leaving space. Yeah. And this was Hammer getting the position back. Again, uh, show you. Oh, no. <gasps> that looked a lot more rejoiny than I thought initially. Initially, I was actually thinking maybe that's a bit of Veselex fault. And I, whilst I don't think he should have been flat out, he should have been, you know, lifting up a bit because of the yellow flags. Yes. That's a bad rejoin. Yeah, it's tough. I, I couldn't. I'm a Kevin fan, so I'm biased. But yeah, I don't know because there was a big gap. It's it's tough, right? It is tough. I'm not sure. But yeah, it didn't look great on that replay. Here's uh, Yolanda Stras, who was a very strong back at Hockenheim, but I remember he got a penalty late on at Hockenheim because he went over the instant limit. So that very much ruined his chances. But he has had good pace this season. This hasn't always been able to show it. I think last time out as well, I think he was on course for an easy P4, but messed up his, his uh, pit stop, if I recall correctly. So, uh, good to see him right with the leaders now. But unfortunately, with Pedersen having the draft from Hammer, he's a bit stuck in that P3. All five of these will go through to the A final, along with Rasmus Pedersen, who's a comfortable P6. And the rest will go through to the B final as we move on to the white flag lap. That's off the track. Yeah, Meinberg is down nine from qualifying. I think he's tired from all that qualifying. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't be. He did almost endurance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, it seems uh, Hammer's uh, holding this position nicely. I don't know how much Pedersen's going to want to fight this now with the A final prospect. Let's see. Going around the outside in T1 is optimistic at best. Well, he's had one crash here already tonight, Ryan Walker. It's just such a long way round and there's less traction, so Ooh, you usually man. end up two car lengths back and it will. Meinborg was off the circuit there. He's had an absolute mare recently as Meinborg. Oh, was it Meinborg? It was Meinborg, I think, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Because, of course, we saw Meinborg crash at uh, uh, Oak Tree when we were on the previous set of replays. So he somehow managed to catch them up and then he's had another one. This is uh, Stromeri catching Parker. Wonder where Stromeri would have been. You know, if he'd kept that P2. Yeah, it was just an awful start. Yeah. And then, as I say, uh, the replay wasn't super clear for me on what happened, but yeah, it, it looked like he had plenty of room left on the left. So, yeah, but as I say, I haven't seen it properly. Well, Philip Hammer joined the series late and we knew he had a lot of points to catch up if he was going to bring himself into championship contention. But after winning back at Road Atlanta, 
he is getting a good start here at VAR as well. And after taking the pole position for the second week in a row, he's going to take the Heat 1 victory as well and the pole position for the A final. Hammer holds on after 10 minutes. Ada Pedersen, Destras. Jameri did get Parker in the end. He did get Parker by half a tenth. That could be important. That's two places on the grid and a couple of extra points. Pedersen of the Rasmus variety uh, finishes sixth place, top of the AM drivers, and gets through to the A final. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, there was a late change as well. I think Dutton uh, dropped down a bit late on, and I think Walker got past Horn late on as well. So a few changes there, and now of course that will affect points and it will affect the grid order as well for the B final. So, uh, question, Robert finished P7, that means he's pole for the B final. Exactly. I'm learning. Alexander Chalet is on pole position for race, for heat two. Shea. Shea. Yep. Is it? Shea. But it's closer than Chalet. That's how I've already said. I've already said it. It's like a, it's like a nice ski resort, isn't it? Yeah, a very nice ski resort. Uh, Shea is on pole ahead of Lazarus, Dimbolo, Lahn, Christensen, Swan, Kirsten Spiedelak, Ben Pedersen, Bremer, Lewitson, Berm, Walton Turner, and Senna. Senna with the qualifying ban. And away we launch already, and Shea with a decent start. It's not the cursed P2, it looks like, so far. And Shea, it's early on the brakes. Almost everyone oh, reaching the wow. same spot. And we've almost got spins for pretty much everyone from second down to sixth there. But pretty much they're able to keep it in the right direction. More contact. And the driver's wiggling about all over the place. It's a great start for Shea. Pulling away from the rest. Great start for Ben Pedersen as well. He's up to P2. How has he done that? Oh, my God. And now more contact. And that's Christensen. who has such a great qualifying. But he's going to be all the way at the back after half a lap. Yeah, that was a poor T1 from so many drivers apart from Shea. P2 lost it all by himself. P4 that became P3 uh, was a bit optimistic. Yeah, every driver was... I mean, this is the problem. I say probably none of them have practiced T1 from a standing start distance. And uh, Ooh, that's someone else off feed lag, and he was in the top six, but he drops out of it now. So loads of change. I mean, Ben Pedersen is up seven places. Says a lot. Like, what a start. And I was dissing him as well for his bad qualifying. And then he shuts me up like that. Feed lag with a shake of the head. He's not happy. No, we'll get replays. There's going to be quite a few for yeah. this for, for this one. That is great. I didn't even see Pedersen make his way through there, but he must have just taken the racing line whilst everyone else was falling off ahead of him. T T1, yeah, they uh, second and fourth just both essentially went deep and half spun and one spun. There was plenty of room on the inside for anyone who was going to um, break at the correct spot. You just, the further you go out in T1, the left, what? Oh. <laughs> Whoever that is, who is that behind? Bremer. Yeah, he is, he doesn't seem a happy chappy. He got, he NDM'd himself. Not a bad start for Thomas Fermi. He's up to P9. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's the worst feeling. Especially on lap two. Why? Because it's the first time you approach the corner at race speed. Not a nice feeling at all. If you get any sort of lock and you're at the optimal break point, then, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just lucky this isn't last season because he did just well, no, season before now, it's been too... He'd still be sliding, wouldn't he? He'd still be sliding now, yeah. There's a few corners on this track where you never did come back. You just... I'd like to do this face in the wet. Yes. <laughs> Ish. I mean, to be fair, it'd just be the same as what it used to be. Correct. Because it's... people forget, like, grass changes a lot depending on how damp it is. Correct. You see a footballer tries to do, like, a knee slide. If it's wet, they could be going on for into the crowds. If it's dry, they're going to stop on the spot. Yep, uh, and, and I racing used to simulate wet rain uh, or, or wet grass. I like what you just said, wet rain. <laughs> yeah, rather than the dry rain. <laughs> and um, yeah, but now, now we have now we have better, better grass. Dimbolo, yeah. an all right start. I think he had a mess. He did start in P3, but he's, he's not that far back. I think he'll take that because I think he was one of the many drivers who was on the cusp of a spin 
five times in the first two corners. And here's a move as well for Christensen, and he's up into P10. Very quick it tonight is Christensen. He will not be far away from the top six, I think, by the end of this race. Yeah, and he knows he needs to get a move on. There's going to be some quick guys in the B final. There is. None of the top, top guys, but like a lot of guys who could Dim have made it through. Dimbelow's got a run here. Oh, careful doing that under braking. It's going to try. It's just too, watch. It's just too far to go. Way too far to go. He's not going to get the door. Actually thought it was going to prove me wrong there. But tell you what, it's actually the guy in front who's causing more of a problem. Uh, is it Matteo? He's really going slowly. That, well, that's just is the car, the head of this GA. And then uh, Lane, championship leader, remember? Behind the former championship leader of uh, Lazarus, the two of them have been leading from the start. Strumeri as well, to be fair, joint led the championship after round one. He yeah. was, of course, racing in, in, uh, race, uh, in heat one. Sorry, I read it wrong there. Yeah, Laz it was Lazarus going slow. Maybe just a couple of bad corners. You almost caused the move behind to be able to happen. So who was P2 on the grid? So Lazarus was P2 on the grid and he dropped one place, which I think is the best start for a P2 man this season. Yeah. So good effort from him there. But it did, he did lose the place to Pedersen, as did many other drivers. Uh, Lane will be getting fairly close by the end of this straight, but not quite close enough for the move. No, to be fair, Lazarus has still got a bit of a draft from Pedersen, and I think that's protecting him from the attack from behind. Oh, you know what? There was a bit of movement in front of the P3 man, and that's why he almost made contact. So this is how Pedersen got it done being squeezed but he's not he's ignoring all that and he lets everyone in front blow the corner Oof, that blue and white car there oh what look at that easy so this was this was Kern Christensen who uh, initially sort of caused the mess at turn one and then he made contact with Lani a few corners later He'd like just pushing it too hard and uh, he knew it straight away. Yikes. Yeah, he was shaking his head, but I thought it was an instant, but yeah, it looks like it was just um, all on his lonesome. Unless he was tapped from behind, we didn't see it, but it didn't look like that way. You'd have to be, I don't know how you'd be that close to someone. But yeah, well, what a start from uh, Pedersen there. Made it look easy. Yeah, that blue and white. Castle. Did that was that the same guy? Um, who did we just say? What Verm? Yeah, the guy that blew to. Oh no! Okay, right. Yeah. It was your friend and mine, uh, Christensen. Right. Do love this corner. Ah, that's of a P6. Swan holding off Fiedelak. But can he hold on much longer? There's a puff of smoke as well, and that was Lane going wide, and he's right in this battle now. But Fiedelak has got past Swan. Now there's a crumb of comfort for Swan. He might be able to keep his head above water after all in this race because of the mistake from Lane ahead. Wasn't, uh, yeah, Kern has dropped from that. Because he was in contention to actually maybe back, make it into the back into top five, but I'm seeing him down four now. Uh, no, he, I think Kern was always that far back. Oh. He, he was down to like P12, I think, on that. Ah, uh, okay. I like that Nürburgring. Um, I can't remember the full name of the team. Nürburgring Esports. Esports team racing. Uh, their livery looks nice. Ooh. Oh, no. Ooh. That is Tom's firm off the track and he's collided with Glenn Broughton Turner. Yeah, we'll get a look at that. Spoke to Glenn a few times um, since these broadcasts. He seems like a nice guy. Oh, Pedersen pushing it hard into Forrest Dolby. Not Forrest Dolby. 
It's, <laughs> it's sort of a synonym of forest, although oak tree. Oak tree. Not really. Yeah. Forest is similar to trees. We're going and to Bathurst at one point. Yeah, yeah, I'm just preempting it. And uh, he's closing in, is, is Pearson. He is definitely closing in. Was Pearson the Australian, as was the Kiwi. Let me check. Yeah, and Dimelo's done a really good job uh, to hang on because he got caught up in a bit of that mess on uh, lap one. Only down one. But the battle of Swan, Fiedelac, that's the one that really matters, right? With Brem yeah. and all that, because that's that P6 position. And, sure is. And like we've mentioned, the B final is going to be it's going to be tricky. Oh, and uh, Mads Luritsen is re rejoining. Wow. He's uh, there is a jump at some point here. You have to get a map as well. Oh, you have to be careful oh, you don't he's, actually he's get missed, the DQ. The jump. Maybe that was on the old scan, but there used to be just like a drop or about five foot. Yeah, there's the livery I was talking about. I quite like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I've seen a lot of locking out there. Oh, small send there from Bremer. It's important that Bremer gets past Swan. Whilst it won't get him into the A final, it will be two places on the grid for the B final. Only top three get through from the B final. We've got quite a few drivers here tonight, so it is tough to get into the B final. Like half the, or tough to get into the A final. Fifteen drivers will be in the A final. Thirteen drivers will miss out. Yeah, very tough. Is it three? Did you say three from the B final? Three. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a good battle to watch, though. Oh, Dimbelo's got past Lazarus. Yeah, let's see if that uh, was That nice. was a mistake yeah. on Lazarus. Yeah, look, been, at yeah. Amount, look at the amount of time he lost, yeah. You'll be frustrated with that, or Corey. What was it? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, though, Shaye is... Still half a second clear. It's not going to be a dominant win. And it wasn't a dominant win earlier on for Philip Hammer. But he's going to get the job done here at VAR. And even in a 10-minute race like this, it is easy to make mistakes. But he has been faultless from pole position. He'll take P2 as well on the grid for the A final. And also gets 50 points to his uh, tally as well. Because this is essentially like a race win. Yes. Wow. Chaye gets a race win there. Edda Pedersen, Dimbolo, Lazarus, Lan. Fiedelak, Swan misses out, but will be on P2 for the B final. He might be frustrated that with that one, Luke. He was in the top six for most of the race, but could not hold on from the late attack from Sebastian Fiedelak in the closing stages. Uh, so straight away, we will transfer. Actually, I think we might still have one or two more drives to cross the line. But uh, the B final will be coming up quick. And of course, a 14 minute B final, 16 drivers taking part. Only the top three make it through into the A final. And it's Robert Van Horn after his seventh place finish in Heat 1, who starts on pole position ahead of Luke Swan. Edwin Forsland is in P3 ahead of his fellow countryman Ewan Bremer. Then it's Anthony Bernand, Kasper Christiansen, uh, Ryan Walker, Nick Kirstens, Nick Horn, Stefano Senna, Sasha Mayenborg, Glenn Broughton Turner, Joel Dutton, Mads Luritsen. Adam Veselek, Thomas Firm, and Kevin Richard, even more than I thought, 17 drivers taking part, and three of them are getting through. Yeah, I feel bad for the Heat B people who have to race right now immediately. Which would you rather be? Would you rather be them that you're warmed up, or from the A final where you've had a bit of a... Well, I'd rather get into the A final. Than well, the, uh, yeah, obviously. Winning. All right, here we go. Five lights. Are we going to have a chaotic start once again? Away we launch. It's a good start this time from P2. And it's pretty even. Someone at the back the got a very three. good start, though. The purple car running on the outside there. But it's going to be three wide for him. Oh, there's a big send from about P6. Oh. Bit of contact. There might be some words three the wide. for that. Yeah, that was a bit of a lob. Oh, the three wide survives. They break up nicely. Everyone's still alive. Chance to survive here is Stefano Senna. And he pretty much did. Top four all in a line at the moment. There's a lot of double file behind. As these guys fight for crucial places, there was a random deceleration there for one of the drivers, and it caused mayhem behind and a fair amount of front end damage for a couple of the cars. But Van Horn held on in the early stages, 
ahead of Swan. And now we've got side by side through the S's. This pretty Whoa. much never works. And it works <laughs> this time. Nick Horn. It's going to lose out. Somehow gets oh. through. And now what he almost lob. makes contact with another drive. That's Christensen sending it. What a lob. I tell you, having a blue and white livery at the moment, you want to be careful of that colour combination. <laughs> no, he may have just misjudged his breaking point, but wow, how he didn't kill anything. Uh, I get to say it, right? Sam Swid seems supporting the lead. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time. I'm, I'm, I'm chuffed to say it. First time ever. Yeah, all right, don't rub it in. <laughs> uh, now Jars are colliding on the straights. This is Nick Horn. He's making enemies with everyone. <laughs> oh no, Van Horn. Oh man, wow. Well, I didn't last for long, did it? I got it in. Oh, he's. N oh, what frustration for Robert. I think it was a self mistake as well. He's down to P6, and it's only the top three who move through into the A final. So he's got three places to gain. It's now Forceland who's up into the podium places. And Horn has dropped back. He made too many er enemies, and he didn't survive the first lap. And we have a change for the lead. Bremer It's going on everywhere. Wow. What happened to Swan then in all that? So Swan, uh, I, I think he just got passed by pace. I think Bremer was just faster. And Swan will have to sell for P2. But that's fine because they are in the top three. Walker will not make it through at the moment, but we know how much pace Walker's got. He's only two seconds behind these guys. So top three go through. So... Walker is, what, 1.1 second off this pack, so if the top three are smart, they'll walk it in. Was that attempt at humour? No. Okay, okay, because well, it wasn't funny. <laughs> Thank you for confirming. There is Van Horn, leader, less than a lap ago, and had two cars as well as a buffer to fourth place. And instead, he's the one who has all the work to do and frankly needs a, a helping hand on the drives ahead if he's going to get through. But he can help himself by getting past Bernand. The sooner, the better. Yeah, Bernand's look, uh, at times looked very fast, though, I have to say, in the rounds we've seen him. Bernand might have some rear damage in the, in mm. the rear. Uh, rear damage in the rear. That's probably an easier way of saying that. He was involved in the checkup on that. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, no, and Robert's done it again. That's exactly what he did on the last lap. And, I mean... In one way, you can blame Bernans. Correct, or, following. But, yeah, I mean, he made the same mistake on the last lap, Robert. Yeah, I mean, following someone's mistake is, uh, yeah, that's the worst feeling in the world. Well, that very much ends his chances. Maybe gives a small hope for Meyenborg, who's up loads of places, up six. Kevin Richard is up ten. And six seconds off the lead. But top three, looking pretty good. Ryan Walker is closing in on them, though. Looks like this top four are probably going to be the ones who get through. Top three, remember, get through. One of them isn't going to get through, but it looks like it's going to be three of these four at the moment because they have got a gap. Oh, Bremer wide. Yeah, and this is hard to recover because you've got to lift so much. Yes, I mean, he's got it covered off. Problem is, if you get offline, one of these corners, fixing it can take either a lot of time or a lot of leaning on the rear. Like we saw how Kevin Richard spun in the first race. Walker is catching these guys hand over fist. He, he's almost a second lap faster. The top four are going to be on top of one another by the end of this lap. Yeah, Mainbog's... Uh, can Mainbog get this done, do we think? A pro in fifth, had a rather unique quality strat, and then a nightmare in his race, and sitting P5 at the moment. But Bremer... Wasn't he fourth on the grid this for this? Yes, he was. Yeah, what a job. Out of the contention for a final to lead in. And this essentially helps his quality position. Oh, He's wide and through goes Swan. The pressure told eventually. I need to stop talking about the leaders. Whoever I mention uh, loses it in a corner. Yeah, Swan flies into the lead. And uh, now half a second clear of Bremer. Bremer and Forsland are teammates, remember, both racing for Simre Sweden Esports. So there could be some teamwork between these guys. Yeah, uh, yes indeed. Top three though, this is going to be real tricky. Although Walker has really caught that gap up as we're looking for Christian with a send. No, it's half-assed. 
and not going to come for anything. Oh, I thought it was going to give him a wee nudge. Bremer has lost oh, another position now. But, but that's between teammates, so maybe that's tactical. What, Bremer and Forsland? Yes. Right. Nice livery pairing they've got there. Okay, replay's coming in hot. Okay, so we've got the race start. There was an opportunistic lob from... Where was it? From Ryan, we're thinking. The three wider from Embright was completely survived. Yep, all through clean. Nice start. Nick Horn had a, this year a pretty good start, but... And this is the Nick Horn side-by-side that... Well, oh. you are. Oh. <laughs> and, and then that absolute... That guy must have thought, wow, I'm getting a couple of positions here, then saw the grass. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so what happened to Nick? Uh, from, to Robert Van Horn? Oh. Oh, no, he didn't lock. That was just late. He was just, uh, he was just half an hour too late on the brakes there. The lock was once he realised he was going off. Sure. And this is him doing it again. Yeah, same, again, same problem. The lock isn't the problem. He locks when he realises, uh-oh, definitely a turn there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shame. He's just missing his breaking point. This is Senna. And he's had a bit of a contact here. Oh, Oof. no. Bang. Well, that's, I think that's just a racing instant, isn't it? Car head up with the half spin. Yeah. Okay, this is the lead change. Just really good pressure there from Swan. It was. Fill the mirrors into that corner. So still Bremer's holding on against Walker. And look how close mine Walker is. They're really close to gap. So you two as uh, Kirsten's. Richard could be with these guys as well by the end oh, of the race. Oh, Robert's off. Robert's off the track. We've got some back markers as well amongst these drivers. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. It's just Bernand. No, it's not. It's not a lap down. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Everyone's, everyone's just... I oh, know, everyone just is very close to one another. Uh, I was thinking, oh, there must be some back markers there, but no, everyone's just really close. Ooh. How he used the grass there, I suppose. I mean... Oh, that's wide. But Bremer! He's giving it up. And through goes Walker. Bremer has gone from fourth to first, back to fourth. And Walker was at one point, Walker was 1.5 seconds off of third with Bremer in the lead. Wow. What a race. And it looks like uh, Bremer's going to get it done here. Let's see. Yeah, great move. Bremer is tumbling now. Einborg can still get into the A final. I wouldn't even say Force Lens is totally safe because both Walker and Meinborg look very quick. Ah, uh, but Bremer might have a chance at responding here. Yeah, it needs to be now. Two positions to make up, and it looks like, to be honest, he's being caught from behind by... Uh, is that Nick, Kirstens? Sure is. Uh, those two are teammates, by the way. Um, what happened Bremer to this guy's livery? <laughs> <laughs> well, even Kirstens doesn't have the right livery. Swan with a comfortable gap out front, 1.3 seconds, and then it's 1.6 odd to back to Walker. And then this gap is um, coming down a little bit for fourth to third. Looks like Nick Horn might have had something, another incident. Yeah, I, I didn't think we caught what had happened, but I mean, he's 36 seconds off the lead and he was the lead. So yeah, I think that's the third incident. Oh, so we're gonna go side by side here. Nope. Oak tree. Very hard to get anything done there unless you expose yourself to the switch back and a bit of draft, which he may have here. Yeah. Although the guy behind might have been a bit too close. Yeah, he's too close. He's too close. He won't have any momentum. You can be too good at your job. Sure. Oh, no. I mean, the guy on the outside was so early on the brakes. Are either of them going to make the corner? No. Yeah, they were just That's early. Nice. He was just really early. Oh, oh, net code. It did look like net code. There may have been contact anyway, but... Correct. It did look... definitely net code. 
yeah, it needed an anal analyzing if it was going to happen anyway. There's just another pack going on. I mean, there's two, two groups, which covers most of the field. Uh, how's Nick Horn doing? Oh, not well. 16th. OK. Shouldn't have asked. Uh, has Bremer lost his tyres from that little lockup? Maybe. You can overheat your tyres. I think the others are just a little bit oh, faster. What a lob. <laughs> that was brilliant. That was Christensen. He sent a couple of lobs at turn one tonight, and uh, some of them haven't worked, but that one did. Still a very disappointing night for Christensen. Very much had the potential to get into the A final. So it's just Walker versus Meinborg, really, for P3. We've got one more lap to go after this. Christensen, oh no, he's, he's had another issue. This has been a roller coaster night for him, and he's not even going to complete this lap. I think he is. Oh, no. no, he's still going. Is there an alternative racing there? I'm not sure what happened there. I'm bored with Thomas Byam, who, yeah, we're too close to the end now for any other one other than May and Borg to have a look. Come on, Mayan Borg, you gotta send it, man. He just set the fastest lap of the race. He was three tenths, oh, well, no, he didn't just send, uh, set it, but he has, has got the fastest lap. He was three tenths fast on that last lap than Walker. Well, quarter of a second to be precise. And we have seen overtaking very possible so far tonight. Yeah, it's so been great. You've got no excuses, Sasha. Has been great options. And yeah, Walker's not going to have any draft to defend. Let's, I think uh, if I was man it's just you want to be on his back by Oak Tree. Focus on that right now. That's your only mission. This lap needs to be on his rear for Oak Tree. Yeah, this, this is he actually flag. lost a tenth of a second. He was much slower on that lap was mine, Borg, than the one previous, the two previous. Graham is actually catching back up to these guys. He's just set his fastest lap of the race. Yeah, this is looking more than possible. Walker really just, just needs to focus on his exit out of um, Oak, and then he's fine. That's the difference, right, between the uh, faster drivers and the average drivers. That corner there is a perfect example of learning how to carry speed and trust your brakes and hook it up, because, yeah, like we said earlier, if you're re-throttling, which you find a lot of them doing, you can hear them doing it, it's because you're overslowed. So let's see. This is the corner I've hyped up for half a lap, yeah. so something better happen. If he's going to gain time, it's going to be here. On entry, yeah. As he does, it's a wider rope exit, and let's see. I mean, he's, he's closer, but the overtaking chances are running out. Realistically, unless Walker makes a mistake, he's not going to get past on the run to the line. And he will gain hundreds of a second down this straight, but it's not enough. Nope, not oh, my by a long shot. And Walker is doing everything he needs to do. It would be a very satisfying P3. Swan leading the way still. And it's been a swimming drive for him so far. And he's going to be able to take the B final race win. Forsman will follow him home. They will both get through into the A final. And behind them, it is Walker who makes it through for Satellite Racing from seventh on the grid to get on the rostrum and get the final spot. He will be P15 on the grid. And unfortunately, Meinborg, Bremer and co. will all have to start preparing for week five of the championship. Yeah, I feel sorry for Bremer. What a race. What a topsy-turvy race. Fourth to first to fifth. Oh, someone's playing an engine. Yeah, blowing the engine's easy done in these cars. Mm. A couple of downshifts and you uh, release the clutch and uh, away she goes. Um, yeah, great race. Tough. I obviously feel sorry for Robert and for Bremer there, but I think Bremer did well, just didn't have it what it took to just bring it home in the uh, top three. So as we're getting ready for the A final now. Sure, we've got a three minute break for the drivers to take a slight breather, uh, which will be grateful for many of them. Uh, just a reminder that after this broadcast, we do have the late Apex coming up and it's a very busy week. Maybe uh, the busiest. Maybe the busiest. I wouldn't say anything absolutely mahusive. No. But I'd say a lot of medium topics. 
which I've delivered. Way to sell the show. Medium topics. Yeah, yeah. If you want excitement. They are so excited now. Yeah, if you want excitement. Wow. Probably not the episode for you, but if you want moderate interest, then <laughs> for what an episode we've got for you tonight. Um, because we're discussing um, ACC with Nurburgring coming. Peak numbers, the highest numbers ACC has ever had in its like six years of existence. Um, and uh, it's peaking now. Absolutely insane. Uh, also, of course, more news about the set of course. So we've got the second game name released and also a confirmation of it coming later this year. We've got the new iRacing update, adding rain to the GT3 cars. Uh, we've got F1 sim racing updates uh, and several others as well. Some nice rigs as well by, uh, by Fanatec as well being released. Um, and uh, it is, of course, a GMT plus one. Uh, so it will be on in about an hour. So do join us for that. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, we'll be preparing for race for the A final. Who's going to be starting pole? Um, the pole hammer. Hammer. Yes, it's going to be a good race. Yes. Uh, there's the results from B final. This one up ahead. Tenth and a half clear of Forceland. And uh, walk in that P3. Do who was bad. Luke Swan pick for the app? Like, who picked Luke? Who would have the foresight to pick Luke? Yeah, but he's not leading the championship, is he? Yeah, race win. Just because a race, won a, a race, a race yeah, but he win. Didn't win. He didn't get any points for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so competitive he, on the booth. It doesn't matter if he was P1 or P3. Makes no difference, yeah? <laughs> okay. How did your pick go? Uh, I think third's lost. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah, well, yeah, but uh, at least I was mixing, yeah. Good comeback. <laughs> 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 Me and Sam need to race and just settle this. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching you'd win on that one as well. <laughs> no, I so. wouldn't. Um, but uh, yeah, we uh, we're a few minutes away. I, th I think Hammer, if he if he if from that pole position, we've seen a lot of overtakes so far. Yeah, I was about to say that. Will, will he actually be able to hold on? Because he's looked very vulnerable on lap one in race one. I think Hammer now knows. I think having been overtaken and how he held it off for the rest laps, I think he needed that to pick up the race win tonight. I think, honestly, being overtook in the way he did, he now knows exactly what he needs sure. to do. Yep. Bump him off. I mean, cover the corner off. Sorry. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. No, I think Phillips got where he needs to win this, 100%. He he showed. He, yeah, he got overtaken, he got the position back, and then he held it off every single lap after with zero mistakes or locks. I think we're going to see him win it. He needs to get through T1. Uh, we've seen a lot of, uh, yeah, shenanigans. That's the word. Yeah, T one's been, yeah, been tricky. But after that, um, it's on the driver themselves. So yeah, yeah, I think he's going to pick up the win tonight. Would be his second race win, well, his third race win in total. He hasn't lost a race so far this season. Joined for round three of the championship. Of course, former Pro Am champion is Hammer. So uh, going to be tricky to beat. Uh, by the way, just a reminder: the title sponsor for. This series is Apex Racing Academy. And if you want to get faster in the Porsche Cup cars or any of the cars on iRacing, do visit apexracingac.com in order to get a subscription. Uh, the Porsche Cup drivers always just say such good things about Michael Yanni, who is the Porsche Cup coach, hosts weekly group coaching sessions, which are included in your subscription. And you can join them and um, yeah, have a chat with the other Porsche Cup drivers. I think usually it's a battlefield of about 10 or 15 drivers join these uh, sessions. And Michael basically tells you how to quick, uh, drive quick. So um, really do recommend, particularly if you're a Porsche Cup driver, but also if you drive GT3s, single seaters or anything else. Uh, let's have a look at the grid then for this A final. Philip Hammer on pole position ahead of uh, uh, Sh Sh uh, Cheyenne. Um, Pedersen of the Nikolai Variety is in third. Then it's uh, Ben Pedersen, Yolande Distras, Dimbelo, Stromeri, Lazarus, Parker, Lane, Rasmus Pedersen, Fidelak. Um, then it is. Uh, apologies, I've lost myself. Uh, Walker, anyway, is. Uh, apologies, Swan, Forsland, and Walker. They're the three tries who got through from the consolation. Let's see who's going to win round, round four of the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup. Is Hammer on P2 the two away bad. P2 Shea. with another poor start, and it's Pedersen who is immediately up yeah. into second position and can put the challenge to our race leader. Dan into turn one, there was a little bit of a late breaking maneuver there from Ben Pedersen, but he wasn't able to yield any position of time. Why is Corey Lazarus? Yeah. Lazarus has dropped almost to the back of the field. Awful start 
for one of the main drivers, one of the top drivers in this series, winner already on three occasions this season. But Hammer has survived turn one, and Ben Pedersen was eventually able to get past Alexander Chalet, so he, he has made that move. I think we need to check your service apps, mate. P2 is a cursed site. He really is. It wasn't for the B final, but every other race this yeah. season. P2 to fourth, because anything, a drop of speed down, if you get sent, then the guy behind also sends. And I mean, we know Shea is a good driver, but he had nothing, absolutely nothing. So uh, Hammer has the Pedersen not brothers. These are the unrelated He's Pedersons. The brothers. See, I'm learning. And I think Ben's been the, what I thought looked the faster of the Pedersons today. Uh, um, well, Nikolai put it on P2 on the grid. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see. But yeah, Shea is very quick, but he's going to be ruin. That's ruin. Is that the right for ruin? Ruin. Blaming. I think it's ruin. The start he pulled away in because uh, he was the biggest challenger to uh, Hammer for sure. Here comes Drew Mary, one of the front runners in the championship. What? What? If he you can stop this. Getting past Parker, he's done it. Brilliant nice work. Move. And he can set his sights now on dim below ahead. But all these positions are competitive. This is the great thing we have about the A final scene. All these guys look very impressive in their heats. And now they've got to prove it in the A final. Many of them wide though. Dimbolo way off the track, but he kept good speed. Fidelac, who had a storming heat too, has unfortunately had a collision. He is shaking his head. He's got a lot of catching up to do. And Nikolai Pedersen has lost out to Ben Pedersen. But there's a bit of contact between the two of them. Ben Pedersen survives though. And behind them, Dimbolo has spun. Oh, now no. he was being followed very closely by Strameri. And I wonder if there could have been contact between, between the two of them. Called it. Ben into P2. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to get spicy, though, for sure. Big points on offer. Oh, bit of contact again for Corey Lazarus. What an awful race this is for Corey Lazarus. In P10, he is down. Two places from his very start, to be fair, Corey. It wasn't a good heat for him, either. Uh, but, yeah, our race winner back at Hockenheim. He looks almost... Uh, Luke Swan back there has been trading positions with Forstland and it looks like he's finally behind. Uh, is that one from the start? Obviously, I think that's more from Dimbolo's uh, spin, to be honest. Uh, giving everyone a free position. Shame to see. Ben Pedersen could win this race. Remember, he was overtaken in the late stages back at Hockenheim by uh, Struis. Unfortunately, he isn't taking part in the rest of the season. He's, so he's already had a P2 this season overall. He wants to go one better here. He's three tenths of a second behind was the Streece, German out in the lead. Was Streis the IRL driver? Yes. Ah, okay. As he's trying mm. to gain another place. Yeah, he should get this done. Now, I think Hammer's got what he needs to get this race win. He knows there's probably only one position he needs to cover off. And Lazarus, after making that move initially, has actually dropped back again. So uh, this could... Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many loops he did there. Nightmare. Shaye has got past Ben Pedersen. He's dropped back again, Pedersen. Must have made a mistake. And he's going to come back again, no. but it wasn't on. Right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, Ben was second, right? Yeah, just... Yeah, just so something must have happened. Ago. Yeah. So it's now Nikolai who's got the opportunity to overtake the race leader. See how this plays out. All this plays into the hands of um, one Mr. Hammer, giving him some breathing space while they all battle and overheat their tyres a little bit. They won't learn. First three laps are so important just to cycle your tyres. Uh, you overuse your tyres in the first couple laps and you'll be paying for it the rest of the race. Because Philip Hammer's had nothing to do. He's going to be uh, strong for the finish. I know it's only 18 min minutes, but when it comes down to a few tenths, that extra bit of grip really can help. dimbelo has got ahead of Swan. I think Swan's had... Uh, no, he's, no, he's it's, not it was too much. Wesselak, he actually got ahead of. Oh. Shea, yeah, I don't think Wesselak's in this race. Oh. Our, our timing screen isn't fantastic for these heats. Um, but, uh, yeah. You are correct. It was Swan. This is what we want to see. Top five, 1.1 seconds between the five of them. Shae looks very quick. 
tonight. Quarter of a second, the gap between the top two. Pedersen could go for it, yeah? Yeah, and catching, actually. He's got a very uh, good he's run. He's dipped out of it. Needs to be careful of the dive from Shaye, like this. Yeah, this might not pay well for Pedersen here. Well, no, I mean, he's not going to get him on the outside, so yeah, it'll be fine. Could go for the cutback here, though. No, he wasn't close enough. And also, very late on the brakes was Pedersen. Even if it did mean that he missed the apex slightly. Great battle, though. It's difficult to tell if Hammer's got an edge on all these guys. Remember, he was very good in qualifying, but in the race, he's never pulled away. He's always been the third or fourth fastest man on track, but seeing that he gets track position, uh, you can't do anything against him. If he has another gear, he needs to start using it because he's not going to survive with the cars so close to him for another 12 minutes like this. Got down to under three tenths. If it's about quarter of a second going onto the back straight, a move could be made at the end of the straight, but it's just increased again to 0.32, so he should be safe. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be tight. Yeah, even from three tenths back, he's going to be pretty close here, Pedersen, but of course it's one line through this corner. Hammer goes from the right side of the circuit to the left and then back to the right. And so there isn't a lane really that you can pick for as the attacking driver. And then Pedersen's just got to try to keep it close as he can through these latter corners on the lap. But he does just drop another tenth of a second and Hammer gets the gap that he needs. And still, Chaillet yes. is right on the P2 man. To stress to the leader, one second. Hammer's quite early on the brakes, isn't he, into T1? But I mean, he, I mean, no one's going to do him on the outside if he's ahead going in. And look at this from Chaillet. Is he going to be able to make it? He got his nose ahead for a brief no. second. And he's got to watch out for Ben Pedersen. Oh. He covers it off brilliantly. <laughs> covers, yes. That's one word. <laughs> <laughs> Turning left and hope, yes. No, that was very tight. It's going to be, this is the problem. For every position these guys want to gain, they're going to run the risk of opening it up to the guy behind. They're that close, and it's that kind of technical circuit where it's not just the corner you're on, but it's going to affect your next couple of corners. So you really want to make sure you can get the move done if you're going to go for it. I mean, we saw T1, Pedersen go for, on for Hammer, and he almost ended up losing a position to Cheyer out, for, out of two and three. Let's see, not, not close enough to Hammer to have a look this lap. But he's, he's gained a lot of time on this lap after... Oh, boy, now he's giving it up again. Oh, and this might leave him vulnerable. Shea, yeah, yeah. a really good distance back here. Maybe a bit Maybe too close. Maybe a bit close. too close, yeah, actually. Yeah, he's had to pull out of the draft, which means he's not really going to have the overspeed. He'll have some, but... And now he's not got the draft Hammer ahead. Yeah. He was giving the draft to Pedersen, but it might not be needed. Well, we'll see. It's, it's a long way to go. Contact between the two of them across the grass. <laughs> but Chaye has stayed ahead and he's made the move. What a move that is. They both seem to be out of control and it's lost them time, yes. But it was a necessary move for Chaye if he had any chance at winning this race. Yeah, just think we are starting lap six and all of this has been a recovery from the standing start. That's the price you pay in uh, Porsche Cup. Uh, yeah, that's the price you pay for yeah, being P2 in this league. All right, some replays coming in. So this is the race start. P2 with a bad start, loses to two, uh, to three, and yeah, four. Yeah, Pedersen just with the better traction and was able to get underneath. Yeah, sure, I had to just tuck in and settle for that. That was with Lane, I believe, the contact for Lazarus. Just a tiny tab, I mean, racing instant. And that's LeBron oh. Lani running wide. And then Idalak, I think that was, going into the wall. What the? Oh, that, well, <laughs> some great avoidance. Look at this to go to the right. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, what an odd uh, mistake. That was netcode. That looked like netcode, right? What happened so quick? That's crazy. Yikes. Oof. Oh, that's just with another instant on the corner. What a spin recovery. Beautiful, right? On board. Oh, he's just pushed the car away. I mean, he's drive, driving angry, angry there. 
Yeah. Hey, unfortunately, he's made contact with two cars. Yeah, I mean, if you... This is the Pedersen move. Oh, Pedersen actually messed it up himself on the on the comeback. Yeah. That's how he lost the two places. Well, if you can spin on grass, you're doing something really wrong. I'm sorry. It's gripping <laughs> in the asphalt nowadays. At Imola, I've been using it all week in the rain because yeah. it's got a little bit more grip than the asphalt. Oh, really? Okay. At Camino Rale, you know, we used to fear the grass. Sure. In the rain, I'm grabbing two tyres on the old uh, grippy grass. <laughs> <laughs> it's craziness. Shaye has got the gap down to eight tenths. It was up at 1.4 seconds before. He will be on the back of Hammer before the end of this race. But he's only going to have a lap or two to overtake. Obviously, the reason he's spinning on the grass is because you've got to keep turning right. That's the problem. It's, it's not a straight, this VIR track. It bend, The straight bends round to the right for a very extended period of time. Okay, can Shaye close this gap down? What have we got? Five minutes? Six, seven, sorry, six and a half minutes. I lost it there for a minute. I actually read 18. My brain read to my head six, like a clock. So then I did. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I had a bit of a yeah. moment there. <laughs> had a bit of a moment That's there. one of the skills that you get as a sim racer. Because <laughs> I, I think that's something that we take for granted. I don't think most people read. Uh, no, I think most people do read 24 hours. But I think we do most of our time in 24 hour clock, don't we? I uh, use 24 hours. 3 p.m., we say 1500. I have uh, like military background, yeah. So I, I've always used the 24 clock, yeah. Even on my phone. As I present, yep, 24 hours. Yeah, clock. I can testify. He, he has got 21 on it at the moment. Nine o'clock in the evening in the UK. Uh, not really any impression made by Shea on this lap. It gaps back up over a second. So Hammer with a much needed lap. And that's one less lap for Shea to make up the gap. Do you think Shea can get it done? No, not now. Before I thought he might, but now, no. No, I agree. His tyres are going to be a lot hotter as well. I mean, Hammer hasn't barely used his at the moment, so when it comes to crunch time, he's going to have that little bit of needed traction to help him sort of go around the outside of a corner or defend something. Where Shai has had to battle his way up from fourth and defend a few times. Distraz is still on the back of this group. Obviously, Stromeri, four seconds, three odd seconds off the back of this pack of five. I say pack of five, it's really a pack of four and Hammer in his own pack at the moment. Distress seems to just be on the back of this group, just a little bit further back. Oh, Lani's got past Dramari. Oh, yeah. It's because I said his name. Ah, uh, teammates. So I think they... I mean... Mm, I was going to say it was for the championship, but I don't think that is the case. Because whilst Lane is leading the championship, when you're taking con into consideration the drop score, Stromeri's ahead in the championship, so I doubt they're playing those games. Agreed. But maybe he, they think that Marnie's a bit faster. Maybe they'll reverse it later on. Dip what a below. move. Gets past Pedersen. Is it going to be too close, though? Is uh... No, he's got... That was a very good drive off the corner as well. He's been waiting for me for a while. These two have been absolutely locked to one another for about five laps. So many sectors on this track. Six sectors. Come on, Marnie. Don't need that many. <laughs> Have four at most. Unless it's not. Uh, Shea seems to be losing tenth and a half in the last sector every lap, so he's able to pull a little bit on Hammer, but then it drops. Mm. Well, yeah, he's tenth faster on this lap. But with two to go... Oh, it'll be close, actually. It'll be really close. Really close. I hope no one's messed up the fuel here because Hammer might just force an extra lap. Because, yeah, they are right on the cusp of making it to lap 11. But I think it will be 10 laps this race. That's the toughest thing in these um, sprint races that aren't officials. You uh, have to do it all yourself, right? You can't just load a setup and be like, OK, yep, I trust the setup maker. No. It's happened to me in quality before. I'm not going to name the shop. It was an Apex. No. Was it VRS? I'm not naming the shop. Was uh, it PDS? 
It was Craig's. And I didn't have enough fuel for lap two in qualifying. <laughs> just ran out halfway through the lap. At road lap. This was years ago in GTE. Yeah, I just ran out halfway through the lap. Worst feeling. Kind of went back on not naming the shop there quite quickly. Yeah, it didn't take much pushing, did it? It didn't seem to take much pushing. Uh, ben Pedersen running P4, obviously down two places from where he was earlier on in the race, but it to be a massive points haul for a man who did not qualify well, but had one, probably the start of the season. I mean, no one's going to beat that start from Pedersen. He went from ninth to second in a corner and a half. Oh, so. she is a little bit loose there. I think it's going to cost him on exit. As it does, it's just running away. That's a good exit. On. He, he takes a slower entry into those final two corners, but gets a really good launch out of it. So, white flag, do we get confirmation? Uh, let's spot, is the flag man doing anything? I don't think he is. No, I think we've got an extra lap. Yeah, we're just going to make it. We will make 11 laps. Let's see if it becomes a fuel saving competition. <laughs> the sun's still stationary in that exact same spot in the sky as it has been all, all day long. Sam does not agree with uh, no, no, time no, 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 moving. No, no, no. Hey, all our other, other leagues do, but Apex Racing Academy will only use the dates pack set since. We don't really want it to go dark here either. Yeah, we do. I don't think there yeah, are do. lights for. On a few miles. 8x multiplier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happens with rain on an 8x multiplier? Does it come down really, really quickly? <laughs> you must be excited for the first uh, Apex League that has weather transitions, wet to dry, dry to wet, stopping rain, like the check the pit in. Oh, no. That's going to be one Too place much. lost, but he's all right. He's all right. So you need to distress. Well, Lane may have a run. Let's see. Nah, 1.5 seconds back still. Uh, so Pesson just needs to make sure he hasn't overheated those tyres. Seven tenths of a second now, the gap, with one to go, we believe, unless that flagman wasn't very flamboyant with his flag waving. You can see the time at the top. Like it's really close. Is the checker flag going to come out? It is. Uh, that's going to be it. And Philip Hammer, for the second week in a row, takes the race win. And that is some comeback for the man who joined mid-season. And he's got a maximum haul of points from the two meetings he has attended so far. He beats Shaye, he beats Pedersen, he beats Destriaz. Ben Pedersen will be top of the AM drivers with uh, Rasmus Pedersen and Edmund Forstund running up the AM podium. But Philip Hammer, a delight for him. And he controlled it from start to finish. He was, he was never more than a second and a half clear of anyone else for the entirety of the evening. But it never really looked in doubt. Yeah, and that's a good sign. And not overdriving, not feeling that pressure to just quote unquote push. Uh, he just hit his mark. He knew he was quick. He knew how to defend the corner after having that uh, overtake put on him. So he just hit his marks and did what was needed. And uh, he looked like a winner from the off to me. Uh, I think Shaya has the pace, but you need the package to win. Yes. And he didn't have that today. But yeah, it was great, great, great race. Let's have a look at the results then. And uh, Philip Hammer being able to take the race win ahead of Shaye and uh, Nikolai Pedersen. Uh, good to see Pedersen once again perform. I mean, second and third in his first two races of the season. Like, really impressive from him. Yolan Destras, good to see him perform because obviously he's had pace all season, but I think that's his best result of the season. Ben Pedersen, uh, after a, uh, un uh, underwhelming qualifying, way up there in fifth position overall and top of the AMS. Then it was Lane Stromeri, Parker Dimbalay, Rasmus Pedersen, Edwin Forstland, Luke Swan, Fiedelak, Walker, and Corey Lazarus. And it feels like a while ago that Lazarus was leading the championship with a healthy advantage. But, you know, when you miss a round and then, of course, uh, struggling tonight, yeah. he is far from the championship summit now. Yeah. And uh, a lot of pressure for him for the rest of the season. That didn't look like an ideal race for Lazarus today. It looked like a lot of uh, frustration you could see in his driving. Some unforced errors due to, I think, just overdriving due to frustration. But I don't know, not inside the cockpit, but just uh, calling what we see. 
Um, unfortunately, we have no interviews at the moment from drivers, but I, I see a few drivers will come and have a chat. Nick Horn, if you're in, in chat, you usually have a chat with us. Maybe you don't like us anymore. We were, we were giving him stick for his, his uh, picture last time. You gave him a lot of stick, time. Yeah. So maybe he's decided that he, he doesn't want that criticism. Of uh, anyone else, it's big he to actually, join us. Yeah, He actually did an Instagram post calling out the fact that his race didn't go great because he didn't listen to Sampsoid and the fuel strategy. Wow. I know. Wow, wow, wow. What can I say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 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 update on uh, one of the events that is happening on Apex Racing TV, though. Uh, the Racing Unleashed uh, Challenges. And on Sunday, we have the Challenger League. Unfortunately, you can't uh, register for Sunday's race, but we've got the Racer League in two weeks' time. Uh, and that is for drivers who are 6k or above iRacing. So if you are in that range and you fancy driving the GT4s at Watkins Glen, then go over to apexracingleague.com in order to sign up. Uh, was a lot of fun back at Hockenheim, and uh, I'm sure it will be this time as well. But also, if you're sub 6k, we've got loads of other challenges happening for the rest of the season. So sign up for the series over at apexracingleague.com. It's free entry, um, and then you can see what challenges are coming up. And if it's a car that you like, if it's a check that you like, you can join and uh, yeah, take part in the other races this season. And of course, there's a lot of prize money as well. 700 euros for each month. 700,000 euros. I'll take part. Carry on. 700 euros per month is available. And uh, yeah, you can uh, sign up at apexracingleague.com. Let's have a chat with some of our drivers. Uh, let's have a chat with Nick Horn first. Uh, Nick, thank you for answering our prayers and uh, coming to have a chat with us. Um, no worries, chat. Good, good uh, pace tonight, honestly. I mean, like, I was looking at you in the heat and, you know, you were running up at P7 at one point. So considering that you, you were saying you didn't have much practice, it seemed um, like you were, were quite promising out there. Yeah, literally zero practice. I couldn't get on the training with Michael this week because I was away at work. Uh, so the first laps I did in, I think, over 12 months were at um, 6 o'clock this evening. How did you find the circuit? Terrifying. <laughs> 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 it's uh, it's it's so difficult if you get your line slightly wrong you end up all over the place so and i had no muscle memory for it so i was literally driving on my well eyes on stalks and my and looking in my mirrors so it didn't go very well but i had fun yeah yeah well, i'm glad that you had fun i we we saw a, a mammoth move from you at the s's on lap one of the a of the b final if i call correctly um, how did you survive yeah, I was, that? I mean, that looked suicidal. I refused to lift. I was like, I'm going to give him loads of space. I'll use all of the curb. And then when, when it was his turn to have the curb, I was just like, oh, I'm just going to leave you all the space. And we'll, when, when we get to the rise, we'll see what happens. And then, I don't know who it was, who just came steaming past my outside um, and disappeared across the grass, which put me off a bit. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was quite entertaining. But I was just being really mindful, especially as I'm on a single screen, of giving loads of space. Yeah, that was uh, Kasper uh, Christensen who sent it and uh, yeah, thought he might be uh, playing bowling with Huber. Fortunately, he missed you by a whisker. Um, next time out, we are heading to Zolder, uh, another circuit that we don't visit too much. Um, I, 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 is that one that you've done much driving on? Because I feel like it depends on when you join the sim. If you joined recently, in the last couple of years, you probably have barely driven the track, but if you joined back when I did, back in 16, then um, you've probably driven it quite a bit. I don't think I've ever driven it in iRacing. I've driven it a bit on ACC way back uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and again, I'm away with work all week, so <laughs> my, my practice is going to be at 6 o'clock on Friday night next week, so that's going to be interesting. That's so awesome. expect more back, back of the grid shenanigans from me next week. <clears throat> well, we hope to see you... To be fair, you, you, are, you are in the midfield for most of tonight, so we hope to see you back there uh, next time out, Nick. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to? Uh, yeah, I'll just give a shout out to, uh, as usual, uh, well, you guys for the excellent broadcast uh, and putting on the series and uh, uh, my, my friends in chat and on Discord for supporting uh, my bumper cars. Super. Well, thanks for having a chat with us, Nick, and uh, we'll see you back next week. Cheers. Catch you later on. Cheers, mate. All right, it looks like we've got one Ben 
Pedersen. I assume that's Ben Pedersen. Y- yeah, I, I was really confused. And I was thinking, oh no, have I forgotten that a driver exists? But no, yeah, PGA, big golf fan. Ask him about golf. Ask him about golf? Yeah. Oh, wait, he's just going to... Oh. As, yeah. I, as I went to grab him. Maybe golf is a touchy subject. <laughs> he was like, no, no, I'm not taking any scores. <laughs> uh, well, that's a shame. Uh, it had a good race as well uh, until the spin at the end. Uh, it was a good. It was a good race for more, more actually. It, it, it looked like a tough event. Uh, looks like a lot of them were leaning heavy on their tyres. It looked very tough in one for them. The overtaking put such pressure on the mid part of your lap to make sure everything came to that oak tree turning to make sure you hooked it up. It looked, and then the problem is again that where we saw Robert Van Horn had the problems. That corner again is it's the highest pressure corner on the point, and everyone's looking in their mirrors. Now I've seen them race four races. It looked like a tough. It looked tough out there. It really did. It, no, uh, I thought they did well. Yeah, they did look tough. Um, looking ahead to Zolder next time. Uh, when was the last time you drove Zolder? Apart from the 23 hours that you probably done as well. I, I did a different year to you. Uh, oh, yeah, here yeah. we go. Here oh, we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, why no, you brought it up. That's why you brought it up. Well, no, well, well, How did you finish? Uh, you want to know? Yeah, I want to yeah, know. Because, uh, I mean, I didn't want to bring this up. Really, no, uh, but, yeah. Yeah, of course, I, uh, I, I won the... Uh, I won the uh, won the split in the uh, in Mustang. So, um, but yeah, I wasn't. You know, I wasn't asking for that or anything. Um, but no, yeah, how, was, how did you do? Uh, I beat Jimmy Broadbent. Yeah. Were so you in the same us. class? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. we were in HPDs, okay, like yeah. real men. Sure. But you know, I was pushing Mustang. No, I don't think there's Mustangs in our year. I was the year before you. It was. Oh, I can't remember. Or twenty two. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure what classes it was, but the HPD was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, it was a good event. It's tiring, obviously. It's older in the dark as well. When you're doing double stint, it, it's a demanding circuit with all the chicanes. I think yeah, yeah. anyone trying to learn this on the day, it's, it could top VIR. Because, like, what is it? Turn one's awkward. Turn two is awkward. Turn three, you, by now, you're like, uh, the wait. The gravel's is, horrible yeah. on the outside turn three. Apps, it just halves your speed. And then the once you've done all those long, annoying sweepers, you've then got chicane, uh, chicane, 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 chicane with giant curbs on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then you've got the hairpin, and then you've got the very awkward, depend on the... I always forget, I always have to do a lap to learn what section they're going to use. I don't know which one. You, I prefer the slower one. Yeah, the Grand Prix layout. Yeah, yeah I we're using the, the Grand Prix I hate layout. the not, fast not one. Not the alternate. Yeah. The fast one looks friendlier but no if you need if you need to actually get the speed out the way you have to smash those curves is scary as hell yeah um but yeah i love zolder it's just um not a track we use anymore uh it is not uh but we will be using it next week so make sure to keep tuned for that i've uh, got loads of other broadcasts as well coming up on apex facing tv including the late apex starts in about half an hour's time we'll be discussing many topics on the late apex um, including uh, as well the uh, the Pesk finale coming up in uh, in a day, so uh, big deal for that one uh, where David might want to watch. So uh, do you see our preview of that uh, coming up, and um, yeah, of course do keep tuned as well for all the other races. We've got uh, CMS on uh, Sunday. Uh, that's a seven-hour race, so it's worth uh, tuning in for a little bit of that. Uh, and many other broadcasts as well starting up in the next few days from Radicals to Spec Racer 4 to Formula Fords and many, many others. So do like this video, subscribe to the channel and check out the Apex Racing TV and Apex Racing League and you may as well do the Academy socials as well on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, But for now, from us here at the Apex Racing TV eSports studio, from myself, Sam Fitzpatrick and from David Sampson, We will say goodbye and we'll see you back for round five of the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup next week at Zelda. We'll see you then. Ciao.